welcome to Work the Word. My name is Nolan. I got my good friends here, LV and LV. Nika <laughs> LV. See Josh and see LV. Hey, we keep it real here. <laughs> but what we are doing right now is Work the Word is when we take the weekend word. Um, we are in a series called The School of Faith. School of Faith. Yeah. And we're just going to work it out. We're going to see what God has for us, things that we missed, some topics that really stood out. And this past Sunday was part two. If you have not watched it yet, you got to go on YouTube, Inspire Metro, start from the beginning, episode one, which was Altars versus Towers. Episode two is Trust the Story. Trust the Story. Josh, what spoke to you or what, what kind of things that uh, really got you in that message? But Joshua. Okay, Joshua. Joshua. Oh, right. That's why. Team JLV. Hashtag JLV. I think, uh, in my opinion, the, the second installment of the series, I think, in my opinion, uh, it's one of the hardest to apply. Mm. Yeah. Because you first, uh, I'm not saying that Abraham saw it that way, but reading uh, reading the, the first few verses of chapter 12, I saw there because, you know, when God told Abraham to go, Make provision, eh? right? Because right. God's gonna make him. God's mm-hmm. gonna bless him, and there was even a promise in the end that God's gonna uh, bless him and turn him into a great nation. Right? So, gandang gandang nil ang gandang provision yon. He may not know where he was gonna go, but at least he provision. Yeah. Very yung waiting time when famine hit him. You got going connect, right? Diba? So, sa akin, applying it in my own life. The struggle is there. Eh? Uh, when there's a promise, it's good, right? Because it's very clear, crystal clear. When you look at the word of God, God gives you a promise, and it's so easy to hold on to it. But when famine hits you, you know you pass up in first point, natin, diba? From trusting to scheming. Right. Na scheming meaning, I Lord, it gave me a promise. May famine na yun. Inconsistent na in truth mo and my reality. Mm. So kaya nandam ko asin questions. But then, we'll catch sa ano natin, sa One hour naman to. One hour naman. Oh, two hours. Two hours. Yeah. Okay. Walang break, ha? Yeah, no, that's the cool. basement. Rich okay. roll. My question is, why is it so hard for us to trust the story? I think, I think I don't know. No, I don't know. But what I'm, when I'm thinking about Abram, it said that, Oh, I love that. That's cool. <laughs> no, that's okay. We, <laughs> that was Josh's son that just ran by. And he's going to run by again. But it's okay. Welcome to the basement. No, just kidding. I love Tim Ross. But um, one of the things that we got to realize, though, is it said that it was a severe famine. Then he went to Egypt. Right. So I'm thinking he was trusting God during the beginning of the famine. Right? Because it's not severe right yeah. away. It means it... it it was prolonged, right? I think it's easy. I don't think it's easy, but I believe we can trust the story if it's the beginning of a famine um, yeah. or the beginning of a trouble. But when it is prolonged, right? And when it becomes more severe, then I think it's, it's really the hardest part. I think it's hard because there's a tension between trusting and there's a tension between stewarding. Right. Okay. Because the first, if you think about it, the first mandate to be man, Adam and Eve, was to tend the garden, to steward the garden, to make sure it's flourishing. So I think there's a confusion because of our sinful nature that there are times where we think that, okay, I got I to gotta control it. I got to make this garden work. I got to, I got to tend to this. But the biggest part, I think the biggest problem, I don't think there's a problem with tending. I think the problem at the end of the day was he didn't go to the Lord. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah. And I wonder if Abram sought the Lord first. If God would have said, okay, now go to Egypt. But, and then gave him wisdom on how to do it. I don't know. I'm just imagining because, unless, you know, but when was a time, LV, for you where you thought it was, where it was hard, you know, to trust the Lord? And how did you, how did you trust them or how did you fail but yeah. learn from it? 
Well, for me, um, I'm gonna be honest, open, and search more and because the last episode you were not. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going there. Yeah, but I, I mean, from last year, transitioning from uh, Iloilo to Manila, mm-hmm. it's really like a two weeks time of deciding: Are we gonna go here? Or are we gonna? Oh yeah. Yeah. So oh. settling there. So I was like, well. To give the context, the message last Sunday really like impacted me. Like, I want to cry the whole time, but the Lord spoke to me. Like, going back to that journey, I was like talking to. Uh, uh, I think two things that I did was talk to the right people. I did um, ask those mentors, "Are we gonna go here or what?" But the most important thing is that I I, I heard. I, I feel that the Holy Spirit told us that are you gonna put your trust in God's story? Mm. Like we're so excited, we're so pumped, but we don't know the details yet. But at some point, there are days na balik na lang tayo sa lilo. There are days na like, um, am I gonna all out to ministry or what? Am I gonna, you know, those depression states? But thank God, God said. I will be with you. Right. Sabi nga ni Pastor Roland mm-hmm. ng Sunday, you, you, ano ba yung God's plan? May, may plan si God. Although it's not clear, I think Moses also wants some certainties and that is why after famine, parang, oh sige, mm-hmm. let's go to Egypt. Abraham. And, uh, Abraham, yeah. sorry. Abraham, uh, they want to go to the, you know, uh, somehow it's a promised land. Yeah. Because I, I feel that Journeying with God is hard work. Oh yeah, it's not always like I'm gonna bless you. Okay, pag nagpromise si God na bless you, it's not like okay one time big time. I'll give you ten million to build the church, or uh, I'll give you all the for- fortunes here on the earth. But it's not that. It's at the end of the day, I and we discovered as as uh, Jelly and I journeyed together, we we found a alam mo yun, uh, intimacy with God. And intimacy with the community of the right people, like inspired church. And God said, "I will plant you, and you will grow there." So it's really like a test of faith. And here we are. We're still. We're not yet there. I mean, the the beauty of walk, walking with God is not about destination. At some point, there's big point. Kaya diba sabi mo na somehow, but to change the direction natin. But not the destination. And I was like, reach it faster. I mean, it, it resonates what I what we're uh, journeying together with my wife. And wow, yeah. that's good. That's good. Yeah. But being story in the LP, no? I know. Yes, I'm grateful because finally honest. I know. Amen. Thank God. Okay, no, Last episode it it and finally and worked. Or question, because reflex natin, especially men, reflex natin yun, eh. If uh, you're the provider of the family, if you're the one fending for the family, when there's famine, reflex is, I have to do something about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, paraan to provide for my family. And sometimes when that happens, it leads to compromise. So that's exactly what happened to Abraham because he had a family, actually extended pang, because as I mentioned a lot, diba? he went to Egypt without, yeah. you know, what I love about the Bible is, yes, there are things na, I don't want to use the word great era, not to talk, but there are things na, it was not explicitly discussed. Yeah. But I believe the Bible is clear. That's why we can say the Bible is the absolute truth because there's clarity right. to it, right. right? And obviously God did not tell Abraham to go to Egypt. We yeah. can we can look at that because we can prove that as if we, if we look at the life of Isaac, yung anak ni Abraham. Oh. When there was famine, God told him, oh, don't go to Egypt yeah. because yeah, he flipped sick. But in Egypt, but God warned him, now, I'm not going to go to Egypt. So my question is, how can we balance that you reflect no. and Lord, okay. because trusting in both waiting, which is so hard yeah, to do. Yeah. So right how up. do you balance that? Lord, okay. I, there are things that I need to address, urgent needs, but I have to trust. Right. I think it's, um, I, I think back to the, just a chapter ahead of that is mm-hmm. Genesis 11. If you go back to Genesis, Genesis 11, and then you begin to see when the people began to build the Tower of Babel, right? Here. Here's the thing. When they built the bricks and mortar, 
God did not say anything, right? Yeah. In, in a sense, God was like, cool. That's not, that's great. You know, you're, you're innovating, you're, you're mastering, you know, what I've given you. But then they built the tower for what? For their namesake. Then God intervened. And so it's interesting that he did not intervene when they made the bricks and mortar, but they, he, God intervened when they started doing things for their own namesake. Yeah. I think when it comes to um, being a man, even being an entrepreneur, maybe you know, you're taking care of your business, maybe you're taking care of your family. When things go in a famine, when, when there's a prolonged state of waiting, I think number one is, like I said earlier, is first of all, you got to seek the Lord, right? We, we got to make sure, we got to ask God, God, what do we do? What do we do? And if God, when, once God said, once you ask God, what do I do? Then I think you have the freedom to start doing. Yeah. Right? Unless he tells you otherwise. So if I make the brick and mortar, right? And God doesn't say no, or that's wrong. Or it's not, it's not against the word and it's not, you know what I mean? Then I think that creativity is blessed by God. But it's not yeah. until, what did, what did they do in the tower? They built it for their own name. What did Abraham do? He tried to protect himself, his own name. He says, for my name, for my sake, right? Yeah. It's the same parallel. It's a parallel. They created it for their own name. Abraham's trying to go to Egypt for his sake. Right for his own name, so that he won't mess up or he won't die. So he schemed, he changed it all around, and so I think that's the key. I think we got to make sure: am I trusting God or am I trying to <laughs> save my own? You know, fill yeah. in the blank for my own name's sake. Does that make sense? Um, I think in that in that gray area, there's there's two ways. There's two ways. The first one is when you ask God and He doesn't answer. There's a temptation to do nothing. There's another temptation when you ask God and he does answer, but there's a temptation to do other, otherwise. Yeah. Right. Am I right? Yeah. And sure. so I think as long as I'm seeking God, I'm doing this for his name. I'm doing this for him. And so I'm going to try. And if he stops me, then I'm instantly going to pull back. And I'm thinking right now, I'm reminded of Paul, right? We tried to go to Asia, but the Holy Spirit kept stopping us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I, I, I'm going to trust God's sovereignty. I'm going to trust that he is working, that the Holy Spirit is who God says he is, that he is, a, he is my director. He is my guide. He is my counsel. Yeah. So if the Holy Spirit is living in us, and we've received the Holy Spirit. Now I got to trust that he will guide. Does that make sense? Yeah. But I, 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 I got to, I got to do a heart check and say, at the end of the day, am I really doing this for his sake or my name's sake? You know, Josh, what do you think as a business person? At the end of the day, you got to make a, you're, you're, you're trying to make money. Yeah. Right? You're trying to become successful. You're trying to build your business. Um, how, do you, how do you give some advice to a business owner, an entrepreneur? Is there a way to make money, but still do it in the name of God and not for your namesake? There is a way, and it's not going to be easy. Yeah, so like what you said is that like you said that's God's win is not the easiest. Well, not, not always the easiest. It's not always the same as what is the best. Right. Get free. That's right. Uh, if you're a businessman, you have to pay that money to Because it is this. At the end of the day, profit on the end. Yeah. Right. How do you yeah. measure the, yeah. you know, the things in your business? Of course. Yeah. Because yeah. you got profit. investors, you got a board. You got... We stake the hat in it. So, and you could fail to raise money. Oh. There's nothing wrong with that, but like, if you're about to business, then there should be, you know, yeah. there should be wealth coming in. Right. So it's not easy if you do it God's way, but we can see the word of God. <clears throat> you can see the word of God. That if you do it God's way, there is sustainability. There we go. Yeah. It's not, it's not easy at all. 
the white people's compromise and the things that uh, one thing that I'm still learning. You want to compromise your recent job? I learned this. My temptation, you know, to start with your trepid thing, right? And the only speaks one big thing, that's not, uh, that's not right for him. Mm. But I have prepared something that. Pero ang gandun lang. Yeah. Hindi sinabi kung anong oras yun. Oh, yeah. It's going in and so on. Yeah. Right, right. I realized that short paths will eventually short change. Right. Oh, yeah. So I'd rather wait for them to remind me. That's why, as a businessman, God has given us the creativity. God has given us the, the strategy for short term and long term thinking. Yeah. And all of those, if you look at the word of God, it's there. People yeah. of Proverbs. Yeah. How the the wisest and wealthiest man. Yeah. Yeah. See, we can see timeless principles there. Right. So it's a matter of one spend the plan, one spend the plan, one spend such. And yes, it will be family. Yeah. Those two will always be family. And I don't want to sound so weird and spiritual here in our arrow deal the power of soul being. Yeah. Yep. The power. Yeah. I cannot really explain how it works. But I mean, we can never go. Oh yeah, yeah, there's no way. That's true. I have met people here in church. Who's exact word exactly mm-hmm. like they so and so and so. Then up in the post sat these things, I'm not this the most at own time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's all be under good job and that's how God's the form in me works. And you think that's exactly one of the things that God was trying to teach me. Yeah. But he has yeah. all ways of doing things. And if only they grasp the trust in my life for yung ano eh nakatahot actually yung yung half no yung, yung second uh, half no pioching about because Abraham did not wait he went to Egypt and grabbed the yeah, oh, long term yeah. consequences at even ngayon ang ganda yun up to now we are experiencing it ayaw nang uh, pag-usapan yung details no but it's for mission the middle of this right it's because of he allow me to use the word failed okay? he failed right. to wait right. on the Lord he failed and Ying ying and you stand on ying ying the itch to do something mm-hmm. about it, right? So I think really patience is very important. Yeah, accountability also is really important. Mm-hmm. That we are in the verge of or that when the ni na main time so kung talk to someone. Oh yeah, that is so important. Talk to someone. I, I like how you know um, one thing that we do. Um, this is not just like a filming group, right? I yeah. mean, we're really friends, you know, mm-hmm. and. I love you guys. Can I just don't tell them what I message you? The prayer points. But the, I mean, we are constantly communicating, you know, constantly talking, sharing, um, asking for prayer, doing all of these things, you know. Um, I think for us who are viewing, let's make sure that we are, we are in the same position. We got to surround ourselves with the right people. Uh, we got to surround ourselves with people that will have the courage to tell us the right thing. Right? Yes. Does that make sense? Right. Um, to be able to lead um, with truth and integrity and to speak life into us and, and, and you know, um, confront us and all of that. But at the end of the day, I, I was thinking how I said something on last Sunday um, and I know this is a shorter podcast but it's shorter because we have a collab meeting <laughs> but um, one of the things that I said was uh, that God does have he has a plan for yeah. our lives and what is his plan it's that he has a plan and it's the scariest place to be like you just said to know that he has a plan but to not know his plan, <laughs> you know, in yeah. detail. And I think if you're here right now, you're watching, you're tuning in right now, um, if there's anything that I can encourage you with is that, dude, God has a plan. Yeah. And it, what, it, what is it? It's that he has a plan. Sure. He has a plan. Um, I, I just met with, a person earlier today, we just had coffee. I had like five cups of coffee already, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and what he shared was, um, and it's cool to always have a perspective from the outside, 
yeah. you know, into the culture here at Inspire. And he was sharing, he was like, it is, it is, it's so interesting how most, most communities of faith have held the tagline, welcome home. Mm. You know, I think it's, I mean, who ushered it? I, I'm not sure if it's Hillsong ushered it first or who, right? But it's a, it's a, it's a tagline that is used a lot. Yeah. But then he, he said, right. it's the first time I've actually seen it in play with integrity. Like to actually see the volunteers, which we call dream team. Yeah. He said to actually see dream teamers uh, love what they're doing, meeting new people, asking for their phone number, asking for their Facebook, talking story yeah. and all of that. And, and, and getting together and I was like, oh my gosh. And the reason why I bring it up is because I think we hold dear to understanding them. Hey, but God has a plan for them. Like literally God has a plan for them. And um, I want to see them fulfill that potential. And so it's so community so important, Ooh. you know. If there is, I'm going to end with this. I want us to give an aspect or give something, a thought of trusting the story, you know. But I want it to be, how do you trust the story? One, one thought, finishing thought. How do you trust the story um, as an entrepreneur? How do you trust the story? having a young family. And then I'll share a thought, how do I trust the story as a creative? Right? Because that's yeah, yeah. kind of encompasses our church. You go first. Yeah. How do you trust the story as an entrepreneur? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I think first and foremost is that um like what you said earlier, you spend time with the Holy Spirit. I'm not sure if some of you are like uh first time uh, attenders of this uh, community but I, I I felt that based on those testimonies of those successful entrepreneurs they spent time the first hour that they woke up with the devotion you know um, organizing the calendar for the day and, and number two I think I always recall the term marinate when you're marinated yeah. like Mang Inasal right the if best you're marinated, yeah the best. <laughs> so if you're like Mang in the Sal, you are so marinated that people cannot like cannot say no to the taste. So if you're like that kind of entrepreneur, Christian, like every investor will go to you because you're marinated in, in the presence of God and all those integrity, you know, how yeah. to do a uh, good business. Yeah, I think those are the things that really uh, saturates my heart and also if you try to give also the godly vision to your staff, to your, to your, um, I mean, in your business, I think something will change. Right. Not just revival will not just happen in church, but also, I mean, godly entrepreneurs. We're so excited to have those. Oh yeah. In, a, sure. in our community, and uh, yeah, I think those are the things that I would like to awesome, share. Awesome. To restore. That's well. Father, yeah. and husband. I think it's very important if you would we look at uh, the story of the Israelites. Right, every time they go, uh, they go from one place to another, they set up a memorial, and God commanded them. Now, whatever happened here, you make sure you share it to the next generation. And I think it's very important yeah. for the next generation. Like in in the kanina, that's yeah. Levi, who was my firstborn. <laughs> so he ran away from God and he came back. So I'm grateful. <laughs> And look at my kids. It's my responsibility to share the story to them. Right. Which, to share the story to them so they know exactly, okay, so who God is, what God has done, and what God is doing, and what God has yet to do for the family. I think it's very, very it's a good starting point. Yeah. That's a good starting point. Yes, there are times now when I share, I feel like, oh, dad, 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 what are you talking about? Can you just play, hey, watch YouTube or yeah. just play Roblox? Can Roblox. You just play? As young as they are, when we sow seeds, you know, yeah. the word of God, we sow seeds of truth. It's God who's going to make that seed grow. So I think that's a good starting point for me. And second is, so 
one time, I was going through this really, uh, really, really, uh, really personal but really tough situation. And I messaged, you were in Hawaii then. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Plus a messenger. And he didn't, he didn't pray for me. He didn't say, no, what you mean? Walang ganun. What he said was, do you remember? Because you're doing it on your own. Eh. Remember he said, oh. Oh, I don't remember. Okay, please delete it. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's in German, but it's there. Said, you're doing it on your own. So it's time for you to involve people. Yeah, that's what he said. I can show you. I will yeah. never show we'll you. Put it on the screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> and as young as they are, they need to see that I can trust my community. Right, yeah. So that they can have a tangible idea of what yeah. trust means. So that's why when you know, like we're recording now and getting money from everyone so give me one uh i think those two those are good starting point yes to build that you know that pillar trusting the story good and my family it's good so good i think um trusting a story as a creative either it being you know you're an artist you know entertainment uh editor you know uh content creator or right. you know just out there in that creative field whatever it be even maybe an entrepreneurship i think one of the things that we we got to remember is that god gives us the freedom to create you yeah like honestly i keep co- going back to genesis 11 when they were creating the tower i mean not creating the tower but they created mortar yeah right and bricks that is one of literally the most innovative things mm. of that day, right? The only problem was they did it for themselves, right? Mm. And if if they if they created it, right? They had this genius idea. Yeah. You know what I was thinking? What if Abram didn't? I uh, know, didn't just immediately say, I don't know what to do, so I'll go to Egypt." What if he turned on the creativity that God gave him? Mm. Turned on that innovation and say, okay, I'm in a severe famine. I'm being guided by the Lord. I'm in the wilderness. I know Egypt is not where God told me to go. So he's probably wanting me to do something here. Yeah. What can I do right now? Just imagine he put his mind to it. What if he created the first, you know, agricultural yeah. invention that he, you know what I mean? Something different that sure. cr- that creates um, gardens out of, out of deserts. And, you know, I, I don't know. But he, he cut himself short. I think as a creative, um, to trust the story is don't cut yourself short and start copying. Yeah. You know? Allow yourself to be in the wilderness and ask God, all right, God, I'm trusting you that I'm here. I might be in a creative block right now. I might not know what to do, but you're the God of creativity. You created this world. Now, I'm just going to try. Does that make sense? Yeah. Wherever we're at, from entrepreneur to a, you know, a husband, um, young father, young father, oh, you grow it, uh, <laughs> as a creative <laughs> Um, wherever we're at we got to trust the story um, I want to encourage each one of us once again as you're watching Work the Word what we're talking about is we're going through Gen- Genesis from 12 to 22 wow. um, looking at the life of Abram the father of faith and we're looking at the school of faith and so wherever you are at uh, we just want to let you know the trust the story that doesn't mean be passive it doesn't mean I be inactive, you. but it means to be in a community, to be seeking God, and to just be able to steward what He's placed in front of you. Yeah. Remember, God has a plan. What is His plan? It's that He has a plan. Yeah. We'll see you guys on the next work to work. Work the work. Or work, or work. work the word. <laughs>